I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham, and this is Business Line, your global business barometer coming to you from City Walk in the heart of Dubai as the sun goes down. This February saw world leaders and innovators flock to the seventh World Government Summit in Dubai, and topics on the table included the digital economy, governing AI, and the future of work. Rubbing shoulders with them was musician Will I Am, who was there to launch his AI powered personal assistant, Omega. Noni Edwards has this report. As a music producer, there are few accolades Will I Am hasn't collected Grammy Awards, Emmy Awards, A list collaborations, and worldwide number one singles. Like many successful celebrities, he's now looking to channel his influence into the world of business. AI for humanity, empowering people with data. Um, uh, our business model is not Facebook's, Google's, Amazon's. Um, our, we, we have the luxury of starting fresh and creating our arch architecture from, from the bottom up. His I Am Plus group has partnered with the Dubai-based conglomerate Majid Al Fatain to produce the Omega, a contextual personal assistant. We have a technology solution that is not subject to, subject to a business model where it's about monetized people data, mm -hmm. okay? Where that is actually available for people to live a better life. After a successful German language trial, Omega's global launch in English and Arabic has happened here in Dubai. Over the past couple of months, we've focused our team um, for our system to speak and understand multiple dialects of Arabic. And um, in the next couple of months, it will have learned and, uh, and be able to speak all dialects of Arabic. This linguistic element of machine learning is the next frontier in AI-powered devices. Omega has the capacity to understand human speak, so you don't need to speak robot. The Omega is designed to take over some of the more predictable elements of our daily routine, like helping with dinner. I, I want to make spaghetti today. Well, here's what to buy, right? Here's what to buy for you wanting to make spaghetti. So that type of shopping experience with context and dialogue computing uh, is what we built. Making it easier for customers to buy groceries or book movie tickets is one of the reasons Majid Alpha Tame is excited by the partnership. They manage global brands like Carrefour and Vox Cinemas in the Middle East and North Africa, where Omega will be rolled out first. AI-powered devices are on the cusp of eliminating some of the most mundane tasks from our daily lives. We already have a glimpse at how this technology might transform our routines in the very near future. That was Noni Edwards reporting. On the sidelines of that summit, we also just happened to speak to the CEO of port operating giant DP Worlds. Sultan bin Salem talked broadly about the issues affecting business in 2019, from improving the supply chain across Africa to the US-China trade dispute. James O'Hagan has the story. DP World has a vast network of ports and logistical centers stretching around the globe. For its chairman, Sultan Ahmed bin Suleyam, investing in infrastructure across the African continent is essential to the supply chain. And though sometimes challenging, it offers unique opportunities. Africa is an important market. That's why you see us investing and continue to invest in Africa. There can be more growth in Africa. The obstacle is infrastructure, uh, connectivity, inter-Africa trade is very, very small, where it should be more, but because of the bad uh, roads, lack of uh, better uh, transportation methods, lack of systems, and of course, tariffs that are discouraging uh, countries from trading together. We are investing in, uh, in, in Barbara, we are looking at uh, Asab, we are looking at uh, the opportunities in Ethiopia, we are building in uh, uh, Congo. Uh, Democratic of Congo, we are expanding our port in Dakar, we are expanding in, uh, and improving in Algeria, in both terminals. We have a, a huge logistic industrial park in Egypt. Second phase of Egypt is uh, undergoing. So uh, Mali, a dry port, Kigali in Rwanda, dry port. So we are uh, moving from just a port operator to a trade enabler. When asked how the ongoing trade war between the US and China was impacting his plans, the DP World Chief seemed unfazed. Track record telling me that Trump has made deals. People thought Mexico deal will not happen, it happened. People thought Canada will deal will not happen, it happened. Why, why don't China happen? It will happen. Of course, both need each other market. Both are big markets. Both will have to sign. But for Trump and the United States, they want the free trade to trade America 
fairly. And an agreement between these two giants will resolve that. James O'Hagan reporting there. Now, given recent developments between China and the US, there may well be cause for tentative optimism. Jane Witherspoon has more. A new round of trade talks between the world's two largest economies has commenced in Washington. The previous round of discussions in Beijing ended without a deal, but both Chinese and American officials say progress was made. The White House says the talks are aimed at achieving structural progress in China that affects bilateral trade. The real question will be, will we raise the tariffs because they automatically kick into 25 percent as of on $200 billion worth of goods that they send? So I know that China would like not for that to happen, so I think they're trying to move fast so that doesn't happen. But uh, it's, we'll see what happens. I can only say that the talks with China on trade have gone very, very well. In the meantime, our economy is very strong. We're doing well. One of the U.S. sticking points is what they describe as Chinese intellectual property theft and forced technology transfers from U.S. companies. China denies those practices and is aware that the talks are under the global spotlight. We hope both China and the United States can make efforts to implement the consensus reached by the two heads of state during talks in Argentina that they can work hard and meet each other halfway to reach an agreement that is accepted by both sides and meets expectations of the international community. Negotiators from China and the United States have shown that they have a firm will to resolve the country's trade dispute during the ongoing talks and should continue to identify ways to work together to address issues. Well, of course, um, the world economy um, will be benefited if both countries are able to you know, solve their differences um, without um, tariffs and without other things that disrupt the normal kind of economic dealings between two countries. Analysts are urging negotiators to focus on common ground and work towards a win-win situation. While it's difficult to isolate the effects of spiraling tariffs on their economies, what's clear is that the trade war has benefited neither party economically. Well, that is all we have time for in this edition of Business Line. Be sure to catch up with us again next month for a roundup of the biggest business and investment stories from around the world. I'll see you then.